Let me take you to a journey, a journey of activism, my activism. Activism started in my life in a very young age. It began from my home, from my family, when I started questioning. In a male-dominated country like Afghanistan, where women and girls' rights are, the basic women's right is, is taken from them, or women and girls are lacking their basic human right, there are many things you question as a young girl growing up. I started from home questioning my mom and dad why you choose pink color for me and different color for my brothers. Why you choose dolls for me to play and, and cars and footballs for my brothers. Why don't you involve me in decision making and ask me what I like. Why you're trying to fit me in a box which I don't maybe don't like it to be fit in. Activism grew in my life through football. Football helped me to find purpose in my life. It became quite crystal clear in my life when one incident happened in football. When we, I together with some young girls were playing football in backyard of school in a dusty, stony football ground. We were playing football for the fun of the game and enjoying the time together. When we were first time attacked by a group of men from outside our school, we were physically attacked and we were told that women belongs to kitchen and women should not play football and football, women's football is not part of our culture. Women bring embarrassment if they play football. On that very moment, we had choice. A choice to go home, cry, complain, find something else, and turn our face and say, we just give up, we will follow what they say. But we also had a choice to say no. If we don't stand up, if we don't change, if we don't raise our voices, this will become part of the culture. This will continue and this barrier will be forever in our lives and it will affect the, the culture but also the future generation. In order to make a change, you will have to stand together to make the future better for the next generations. We took football as a serious tool, as a tool, as a platform to stand for our right as a women of Afghanistan and use it to, to encourage more, more women to stand together, stand stronger and to be the voice for our voiceless sisters in Afghanistan who lost their voices or because of the culture and social challenges that existed in, in the country, they could not own their voices. In football, we were practicing the courage, the self-esteem and whatever we were practicing on the pitch, we were implementing off the pitch. For example, in football, everyone has a position, you show up for your teammate, you stand as a team together, you chat together, you cry together when you lose, you take responsibility. And, and the team, the team effort, the team passion is there. That's what we wanted to bring outside to more women and girls to join the movement. When that incident happened, one more thing that I did personally, I decided to lead the change for better for my country, but also for the world in a very young age. I said, I'm not going to follow, I'm going to change for others, but also for myself. I led three major campaigns in my life. The first one was to start the movement through football, to include more women and girls to social activities, to change the picture in our society where it was only men standing and, and leading. We wanted to 
bring social change where also women are standing and raising their voices and holding governments, governing bodies accountable. But football was our platform. It is a strong, powerful tool and it's, it is proven in the world. Our movement continued. We were a very little team of few girls playing football to continued more than 3,000 women and girls playing football, being involved in football, working in football, having their coaching licenses, refereeing licenses. The journey was fantastic. The, the development was there. It was not easy. The change is scary and people resist, people fight back, people do everything for the change to not happen. Activism comes with a cost. It's lonely, it fills us with fear. You feel lonely, but also the vulnerability that it has. And I felt all of those when my life was in a great danger due to my activism, where I had to leave my country, my family, my dreams. But one thing that continued with me, the motivation, my purpose to change the world for a better place and use my platform and my voice to be voice for our voiceless sister in Afghanistan. That purpose helped me to continue the motivation to continue and, and the feeling that this is not only about me, this is bigger than me, and this is for many people. That led me to the second biggest campaign. In 2018, our team was exposed to culture of sexual abuse and harassment in Afghanistan Football Federation, where the president of, the former president of Federation was involved himself in that culture. We started the campaign and took the case to FIFA and to Interpol. As a result, the president got banned for life from football. It changed the culture in football of Afghanistan, but it also changed many things in, in football around the world. It lighted up many cases around football around the world. Many cases came forward in football, and still there is harrowing cases of sexual abuse that's coming forward in, in football world. It also started the Me Too movement in Afghanistan, where it started with women's football and continued to different industries, where many men and women came forward and told and shared their stories. On that time, I felt my role, important role, is over. But it didn't take long time when once again, like everyone else around the world, I witnessed my country falling in the hand of Taliban. Following the news, I was thinking about all the women who we encouraged to be an activist, to stand for their right, to challenge the culture, to make the changes, their lives were in a great danger. Knowing that their activism or women's sport is seen as an act against the religion and the, against the culture for certain groups like Taliban and certain extremist group. I could not wait and sit in Denmark in my beautiful, perfect apartment thinking and witnessing, saying my girls were taken one by one due to their activism. I had to act and I connected back with my purpose to use my platform to be the voice for my voiceless sisters. I spoke up, I started calling people, asking people to help me to help the girls back in Afghanistan.
the women in Afghanistan who are playing football, who are activists, who are lives were in danger and they were helpless. It, it changed to an uh, international movement where so many amazing people, individual companies, organizations came forward, even the government came forward and helped over 300, 300 uh, women and girls also, the footballers and their families helped them to get out of Afghanistan and it changed to an international rescue mission. Today, all those women are out in, safe, in safety and safe places. They are started practicing their basic human right playing football. My mission and activism didn't stop here. I continue using my voice, my platform, to raise awareness, to encourage people to stand when they see something wrong, when they see some injustices, racism, stand and raise their voices. I know it's not easy, it comes with a cost. To start with, when you feel, when you see injustices, when you see racism, when you see that there is a lot of challenges and you don't feel good, go first, tell your people, the people that you trust, tell them how you feel, listen to your own voice, Le ask how to, to help the situation, how to raise awareness and try to make communities to together with you make the change. We all play a role in this world in our communities, in the societies we are. If we wait, turn our face and wait for a hero or a champion to come and change our world, it can never happen. It's like a snowball. It starts from somewhere and grows. We have to start from somewhere. We, our voice, our first act is important. It can create change. I did it in my country. I have proven over and over so many others did it. I didn't come from a sky or I wasn't special. I was a citizen of a country and I took an stand and that changed. Today I am also working together with refugees and trying my best to make sports more accessible, more inclusive as much as I can to empower people and let the people to enjoy the, the power of a sport. Everyone can do and take their action and do their part. We are part of the puzzle. We are pieces of the puzzle. We are not the whole, we are our part. What if all of us play our part and work in the best way, do it in the best way? Then we will witness a world more peaceful, more inclusive, where everyone feels welcome and included. Let's play our part, let's do our job best way possible. Thank you.